Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy Ravnica Remastered? Combining nine plus Ravnica sets into a single curated draft experience, offering the ability to have a fun, flavorful, and engaging draft with needed reprints and collector's pieces in both the retro and borderless super art frame. But in a period of product overload and overpricing, do many Magic the Gathering players even want a curated premium draft experience. Just how much does this product cost and how much should it really cost, you know? Are there cards besides Shocklands that are worth it in this collection? And just how likely are you to even get any of those shockingly ubiquitous Shocklands at all? All those questions and more are what's in store, so let's find out if this set is a Ravnican or a Ravnicant. But first, in many ways, Ravnica Remastered is aiming to be not unlike a cube experience. And with today's sponsor, Cubamajigs and Potamajigs, you can create, curate, and best of all, store and preserve that cube experience, be it a Ravnica Remastered set cube, a modern cube, a commander cube, or gods forbid, just a bunch of commander decks. Cubamajigs are reusable, resealable packs for Magic the Gathering cards that are perfect for your cube, for your jumpstart collection, or even just to keep tokens and your sideboard in, as Cubamajigs fit within most deck boxes. It's essentially a plastic booster pack that holds 15 sleeved cards and has a reusable flap that opens and closes so that it can be used and reused as a kind of booster pack wrapper. I don't just use these for my cubes, but oftentimes I'll buy a booster box of something like Jumpstart or, hey, a remastered set and just open up the booster packs and transfer them into Cuba Majigs. And then this lets me essentially simulate having a reusable booster box. All you have to do is after you've built your decks is break them back down into packs and store it away for the next time your friends come over. And speaking of storing it away, Potamajigs are the perfect storage solution for Cubamajigs or just, you know, your commander decks. As Potamajigs can hold up to a 540 card cube with room for lands, tokens, and more. These are durable, heavy duty storage boxes with trays that can hold cards, dice, tokens, whatever you can think of. Overall, it has a 1,000 card capacity and can hold nine double-sleeved EDH decks plus tokens and are simply gorgeous. Many Magic the Gathering artists that you know and love have created artwork for Cubamajigs and Potamajigs. From Randy Vargas to Jeff Miracola, David Palumbo, and so many more, you might just find that browsing Hit Point Press will show you artwork from some of your favorite magic artists. And trust me, these things are gorgeous. So check the link in the description and visit Cubamajigs and Potamajigs at Hit Point Press today. So thank you to Cubamajigs and Potamajigs for sponsoring this video. <laughs> So what exactly is in Ravnica Remastered? How much are they asking for it? And is it worth that price? Ravnica Remastered is a reprint set consisting of cards from all nine Ravnica sets, as well as several cards with Ravnican connections and connotations. A booster pack of Ravnica Remastered has a chance at a total of four rare or mythics, though only one per pack is guaranteed. Each draft pack has what is called a mana fixing slot. This card will usually be a guild gate, sometimes it'll be a signet, but there is a 9% chance of it being a shock land. Each pack also has a 33% chance of containing a foil of any rarity. This is another slot within the pack that can contain a rare or mythic, and obviously that too includes shock lands. Each pack also contains one retro frame card of any rarity. Now the third chance at a rare or mythic and the third possible slot that could contain a shock land. Finally, each pack has a guaranteed rare or mythic, which of course can also be a shock land. And if you think that's a lot of chances at getting a shock land, you're right. On average, each box of Ravnica Remastered has five shock lands. Shock lands are one of the biggest draws for Ravnica Remastered, as they are the second most ubiquitous non reserve list land card under fetch lands. Previously going for anywhere between $20 to even $25 each, the fact that all 10 have been reprinted here with that average of 5 per box, well, that just means price on these is likely to drop and drop hard. Now, a lot of people have talked about how neat it is that this is the first Ravnica draft experience with all 10 guilds in it, but I am also impressed that 
All 10 shock lands are in this set and with such a great pull rate. I'm pretty sure we've never actually seen a Magic the Gathering set before with all 10 shock lands reprinted in it. Usually Ravnica sets have five of the 10 shock lands and then they have the other five in their second set. And well, of course there have been some sets like Dragon's Maze, which had all 10 of the shock lands as ultra rare bonus possibilities, having all 10 of them here. And again, appearing at an average of five per box is nothing short of fantastic for the price of singles. Again, expect those prices to drop. But Shocklands aren't the only cards of interest in this set. I'm truly amazed that cards like Dark Confidant, once a card that was the selling point of premium master sets, is included here and somehow not even close to being one of the most expensive reprints. From Cyclonic Rift to Aurelia, to cards that have never seen a proper reprint before like Cloudstone Curio, there's a lot of staple cards in this set that are usually reserved for those $10 and up per pack master sets. Though the ceiling on these reprints is not quite as high as it could be, as I'll explain in a moment. And while I will explore how that ceiling isn't high enough, I have heard a lot of people say that the only chase cards within these packs are the shock lands, and that's simply a point that I disagree on, because there are reprints in here like Cyclonic Rift, Bruvac, Liliana, not to mention the highly collectible anime arts, many of which are fetching pretty good prices. And I do think it's fair to say that Ravnica Remastered has a lot of really cool stuff in it in addition to the shock lands. But hey, it's no secret that I've always had a fondness for remastered sets. I have referred to them in the past as reprint sets done right, Time Spiral Remastered being one of my all-time favorite sets ever. But I also think that it is vital to make this point. Just because this may be an excellent reprint set with a fantastic draft experience doesn't mean that you can just charge whatever you want for it. Is it possible that you can have an excellent product that is priced terribly? And as this is a financial analysis, we need to be able to separate the two. So. Just how much are they asking for this thing? As of the recording of this video, collector booster boxes are going for $275 each for 12 packs. Collector booster boxes are the only place you can get the full art shock lands. I've seen them in person and they are gorgeous, as well as serialized cards and a select few cards like Pack Rat. But despite all this, my channel has always maintained that collector booster boxes are overpriced premium products and are not not worth it for the average player. Look, if you are fortunate enough to have money to burn and it brings you joy, hey, by all means pursue your joy, but I simply cannot recommend collector booster boxes as a financially worth it pursuit. If you're curious and you want to see what the contents of a collector booster box is like, I open one up in this video here and linked below, but I do not believe collector booster boxes are worth it here or quite frankly, anywhere. What about draft booster boxes? As of the recording of this video, draft booster boxes of Ravnica Remastered are going for between $180 to $200 per box. I have seen some retailers ask as high as $220, but that right there is absolutely ridiculous pricing for this set. I know we still have the financial analysis to get through, but let me save you a few minutes by saying right now that under no circumstances should you be paying $200 to $220 per booster box of this set. It is not worth it, no matter how good of a draft experience it is, nor how many cool alternate artworks and treatments are in it. I can't even say with certainty whether $200 and up is a markup for this product or what Wizards of the Coast intended because there's no MSRP, but either way, do not pay that. What should you pay? Well, looking back at Time Spiral Remastered and Dominaria Remastered, at the time of their release, they were selling for about $180 respectively. So I would say at the very least, Ravnica Remastered should not be selling for a single dollar more than that. Though if anything, it's probably worth less than that, but for the purposes of this video, let's start with $180. Obviously, whatever boxes are selling for near you, you should insert that price to these formulas. But working off of $180 per box, you are paying exactly $5 per pack. 
That's because one of the many great things about remastered sets is that they contain a full 36 packs. Not 30 packs, not 24 packs, but a proper 36. So at $180, that's $5 per pack. And if that's what Time Spiral and Dominaria Remastered were selling for upon their release, how are they doing now? Well, Time Spiral boxes have more or less maintained their value. In fact, they're now currently cost between $200 and $220 per box on the secondary market. But Dominaria Remastered booster boxes have plummeted, currently selling for, wow, $96 per box. That's roughly $2.66 per pack. So if nothing else, I think it is worth noting that at $180 per box of Ravnica Remastered, you could buy two Dominaria Remastered booster boxes. Or, you know, you could buy just one Dominaria Remastered booster box, and then you'd still have about $96 left over for yourself. Or look at it this way. Shocklands are now selling for between $8 and $15 each, with the majority being about $10, and again, all likely due to drop. At an average of $10 per Shockland, that $180 on a booster box could buy you 4.5 playsets, or just one of each Shockland and then enough left over to grab a booster box of Dominaria Remastered. But is $5 a pack even worth it for these? Let's take a look at just what your chances are in getting that value from a pack of Ravnica Remastered. Out of the 291 cards in the base set, within draft booster packs, currently there are only 23 worth the price of $5 or more per pack. Please keep in mind that I've excluded all retro frame and anime cards from this list, and also that packs have the chance at multiple rares, and even have their own retro frame slot, which I will get to in a moment. But looking at just these base set cards, there's 24 of them. The most expensive currently being Cyclonic Rift at $26.51, and Bruvac at $24.71. After that, we have a handful in the $10 and up range, with several more in the $5 to $7 range. And also keep in mind that 10 of these are shock lands. Another point I'll cover in a moment. To compare to both prior remastered and master sets, Dominaria Remastered had 24 cards worth at or above the price of a pack. Time Spiral Remastered had 23. Ultimate Masters, one of the best master sets, had 29 cards worth at or above the price of a pack. Iconic Masters, yeah, 18, I remember that. So it would seem these are indeed on par with prior remastered sets and even most master sets. Except, as I mentioned, that 10 of those 24 cards are shock lands, which is kind of their own beast. They are, after all, being reprinted a few weeks from now in the Ravnica clue sets, just for starters, and when you eliminate the shock lands from that list, then without them there's only 14 cards worth the price of a pack, which brings this very far down in terms of cards of value. Now remember, there's also a chance that a retro frame card within each pack of Ravnica Remastered. This is less straightforward as these cards are not guaranteed rares or mythics, meaning it is less likely you will pull one of these in your pack as an additional rare. Nonetheless, looking at retro frame cards from Ravnica Remastered, there are 26 retro frame cards worth more than the price of a pack. And then there are the full art or anime frame cards as well. These can appear in the rare mythic slot of the ones that can appear in draft boost packs, there are currently 20 of them worth more than the price of a pack, but again, these are much less likely to appear, though they do have notable value when they do. And remember, these are all pre-sale prices. I take them 24 hours before release. As soon as Friday hits, the day that you are watching this video, the prices of those cards are going to drop. Will booster box prices drop with them? We've seen Time Spiral has held its value, but Dominaria Remastered absolutely plummeted. And I think Ravnica Remastered falls somewhere in between the two. It may be worth more than the standard draft set, but really not that much more, even with these shock lands. And again, in isolation of price, this is an excellent set to draft and experience. It's like a time machine, letting you go back and play with cards from Ravnica sets that you may have missed the first time around, or maybe you just loved and you want to revisit. It's a great set, but at a price of $180 per box, 
That feels outrageously high, especially when you see how far Dominaria Remastered has fallen over the last year, and Dominaria Remastered had cards like Force of Will in it. There really isn't the equivalent here. And yes, there are many issues working against Ravnica Remastered, Product Overload being one of them. The fact that Ravnica Clue and Murders at Karlov Manor are both coming out in a few weeks, and just a few weeks ago we had another set and another one. And it certainly doesn't help that, like Dominaria Remastered, Ravnica Remastered has those collect booster boxes, meaning that once again, we have no non-premium priced version of this product, just a premium priced set and an ultra premium set. And thus, in the end, as amazing a curation of cards this might be, as fun as this indeed is to draft, and as cool as the collectibles are, even with all 10 Shocklands reprinted, it just comes down to price, and currently, at least as of the filming of this video, that price is too high. Final conclusion, in isolation of price, Ravnica Remastered is an excellent set. It provides a fun and engaging draft environment, has cool cards from throughout Ravnica's history, with all the flavor and depth of one of Magic the Gathering's most beloved planes. If I were to grade it on the quality of its design, like most draft sets, I'd give it an A, except it isn't priced like most draft sets. It's priced like a premium set, and as a premium set, it is severely lacking. At $200 to $220 per box, this is a strong do not buy. And in terms of worth, it is a fail. Do not buy it at that price. At $180 to $200 per box, this is still a do not buy and a solid D for just that. Do not buy. The lowest possible price range I'd entertain is 160 to 180, which I would give a C grade to. It's not great, but you're paying four to five bucks per pack at that range, and that's fine enough for a draft. But even still, this set just doesn't have the overall value to warrant such a price. I'm gonna be honest here, this was a heartbreaking review because I really do love this set. You know if you watch me how much remastered sets are my favorite thing ever. And in isolation of price, this one's amazing. And yet, I I'm just reminded of those Commander Masters precon decks, which were themselves excellent, really awesome, regular precon decks, but still, non-premium products that are priced way too high. And the same thing happened here. The Commander Masters precons did not suck, but their prices sucked. Ravnica Remastered doesn't suck. It's awesome, but those decks were also awesome. The prices, however, are just out of control. It is possible for a product to be two things. The one hand, a really great top quality design, and also, on the other, overpriced. 180 to 200 dollars for a box of this? It's just not worth it. But if this had been released at a price closer to what regular draft booster boxes go for, maybe just a little higher than the average, this would have been heralded as a home run. Maybe prices will hit more reasonable levels, or maybe you will get the chance to draft this set at a good price, and if you can, I encourage you to do so. We released a draft guide going over in-depth strategies to win your Ravnica Remastered draft, and we even took cards from Ravnica Remastered and built commander decks with them for shuffle up and play. And I hope you can watch those videos and see that this is indeed a great set, just one that is priced too high. And of course, that is just my evaluation, and I really want to hear from you. What do you think of both the quality of this set and its pricing? What do you think is a fair price for a set like Ravnica Remastered? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, owning your own set cube is a way to own a set forever and play it forever without having to keep buying it again and again and again. That's why I just love cubes so much and why I love Cubamajigs and Potamajigs, sponsor of today's video. These reusable packs are great for your cube or just keeping jumpstart packs in, and Potamajigs have a thousand card capacity to either hold your Cubamajigs packs or just up to nine double-sleeved EDH decks plus room for tokens and all of them feature amazing artwork, much of which is from some of your favorite Magic the Gathering artists. So check the link in the description and visit Cubamajigs and Potamajigs at Hitpoint Press today. Links to ordering are in this video's description. Thank you, Cubamajigs and Potamajigs, for sponsoring this video. And uh, edit, cut, thing. The magic of edit. Ding. Sounds good.